are immune to your ch 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 charms. I'm just going to go for it this time. All right, just go for it, Nigel. Just go for it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Movie Date Night. Welcome back after our week break that was uh, unintended. Much needed. And much needed. It was very much unintended, though. Yes. We, uh, we watched... What did we watch last week? Oh, crap, I forget. We watched Drop Dead Thread. <gasps> Drop... Oh, we're not even going to talk about it. Uh, let's do a Drop Dead Fred mini-sode right now. Okay. Right. I can't. I'm not ready for that. You are not ready for it? No. That movie, like, nah, our episode would just turn into a Drop Dead Fred if we really got into it. Yeah, that's actually true. I, I can't. It's too much. There's just so many things that need to be dissected. Um. Yeah, but bottom line, uh, Fred is real. Also, watch Fred. I oh. mean, watch... Drop Dead Fred. Yes. All right. So this week, we're talking about... Oh, wait a minute. Let's back up. I'm your host, Nigel. And with me is Caitlin. Hi. And this is Bad Movie Date Night. Bad Movie Date Night. The Can podcast? I make a theme song for us? Uh, You mean other than our intro song? Yeah. One where I sing it. Okay. Okay. Uh, This is the podcast with the husband and wife. We talk about bad movies. We're the only podcast with the husband and wife talking about bad movies. And uh, we're also the best podcast that talks about bad movies. That's right. With a husband and wife. I'd be curious to know what our listeners like to do for their date nights. Do they torture themselves with this? They probably don't. In fact, I would be willing to bet that a vast majority of people who listen to this podcast are neither married nor... I was going to say dating, but maybe they're dating. What do you think they are? Like five-year-olds? Everyone's dating unless you're five. Or they're talking. Is that right. still a thing? Do people still say that they're talking? No. Let me tell you something. If you're talking, you're dating. Get over it. Okay. You are still. You could still date other people. You're just in an open relationship, but it's still dating. So shut your stupid mouth. Wow. Okay. We're going <sighs> to rip the Band-Aid off this topic tonight. <sighs> Don't get me started. I won't. Okay. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else. Whatever happened to him? To him? Yeah. He was just kind of in two scenes. I know. You never see him again. Yeah. You would feel like he'd be a more important character. Okay, well, let me back up for a second. I'm sorry. I really want to dive into this. I do, too. But we also got to take our time because I feel like I don't have a lot to say about this movie. And we got to hit that hour time on. It felt really long. It does feel long. Um, we're talking about the 2018 movie Slice, directed by Austin Vesely, uh, written by Austin Vesely. No way. It was only an hour and a half. It was an hour and 23 minutes. No way. It no way. It feels like... Two fifteen. Mm, I'd say two. It feels very long. Um, Vesely is not spelled with a W. It sounds like a German name that's like mispronounced, or you know how they pronounce their W's like a V. That's how it spell. That's how it sounds like, but it uh, doesn't. What do you? What do we say about this movie? Um. Well, I wish we were talking about Drop Dead Fred because this movie, unlike Drop Dead Fred, was meant to be a bad movie. This definitely has the feel of a lot of other movies that we have watched in which they intended for it to be bad. Which I'm sorry, but if you're intending to make a bad movie, like, you want people to somewhat enjoy it. Is that correct in assuming? Like, you want it to have, like, a cult following and you want yeah. it to be somewhat enjoyable. This movie was just not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And I know they were intending to make a bad movie, but they made a horrible movie that no one should watch, nor should anyone watch again. Let me say this, too. Chance the Rapper, not a good actor. Was he the werewolf? Yeah. I thought so. He is a rapper named Chance. Not a good actor. Zazie Beetz, sorry, she does not strike me as someone who's very good at being thug. Her? Or ghetto, yes. I the, thought she did a good job. She did a mostly good job, but sometimes when she got angry and tried to act, like, really tough... Oh, she was definitely, like, faking it. It definitely seemed really bad. And it's not, like, put, like acting tough like her character is putting on an act. But really, right. she's, like, vulnerable inside. Um, so, that being said, 
this movie is no bueno. And Paul Shear was in it, which I was not going to lie, I'm disappointed about. Okay, if you had told me that there was going to be a movie in which Chris Parnell and Paul Shear were the two best actors in it. <laughs> you would have pulled one over on me. Well, that in and of itself is something to marvel at. Mm -hmm. But also, this is one of the most boring and slow movies I have ever it's seen. It's so slow, right? It does not move. There's not... Actually, you know, so this is our second time watching this movie. And you know... My first, arguably. Okay, but... Caitlin fell asleep halfway through the first time we watched it. Because it felt like five hours long. Yeah. This is a good movie to take a nap through because you yes. can wake up at the end and you can say, oh, that was good. And, like, not... It doesn't really change your life whether or not you know mm -mm. what happened in the last 20 minutes. Man, we should ask Bailey what she thinks happened because she left. And there was, like, what, 15 minutes left? Yeah, that was the thing, too. So, like, my sister, uh, which you'll hear her on the next episode of Bad Movie Date Night, uh, Third Wheel Edition, she has this thing about not wanting to stay out late. I get it. I don't want to be out late, uh, even though she lives right down the road from the house. But that's fine. Uh, she left, like, 15 minutes before the movie ended. Yeah, I didn't get that. Um... You know, you can't stick around for... Well, maybe because it felt so... It felt... She was so, like, when is this movie going to end? She probably yeah. had no idea. She did not have any idea. Um. So, yeah. Austin Vesley, he has not directed anything else before. Um. It looks like maybe he did a music video for Chance the Rapper. I'm not really familiar with his stuff. Um. But this is his first movie credit. This is his first writing credit. And his last. And, um, oh my gosh. That's why he looks so familiar. He plays Sean in the movie, the guy who gets killed first. Who? The director. Oh, plays the plays guy. Plays Sean, uh... the guy who gets killed first. And suddenly everything kind of makes sense. And we're done. Yeah, uh, so let's see. Chan Zazzy Beats, everybody knows her from Atlanta and Deadpool and... Um, That's about it. No, because she was in uh, Joker. She was in Joker and... Uh, I didn't see Joker. You have not seen Joker yet. We will get around to that. Um, that is a movie controversial opinion that could probably also be on our podcast. Whoa. Yeah. I like Walking Phoenix. So. I know. That's pretty much the only... There's a lot of saving graces for that movie that prevent it from being bad movie date night material. I think Walking Phoenix is an underrated actor. Yeah. Let's see. What else do we have? What Ray was Gray. that movie he was in that he was selling drugs or he was on drugs? Or oh, okay. the one where he was trying to solve the mystery, or the one where he was on the boat. I need more explanation. Did he have mutton chops? Yes. Inherent vice. Yes, that was a good movie. Do you like? I really hope that everybody's impressed with my <laughs> uh, process of I elimination know. with you. Everyone should know this. Whenever I say to Nigel, "Hey, remember that movie that he was in?" And then Nigel just knows what movie I'm talking about. I could literally be like, okay, hey, remember when Chris Pratt was in that one movie? And Nigel named the correct movie that I'm thinking of. He always does it. It's very impressive. And when he doesn't do it, I get very angry at him. Because yeah, you do. it's like once in a lifetime. And I get so mad. Like that time that I couldn't figure out Alan Tudyk. Oh, that drove me crazy for years. Not really, but like that was what, like a solid month where I couldn't figure it out. I mean, it, it was probably like three days. Oh, it felt like a year. I I don't even remember why I needed to know his name. I don't know, but you now hate him in everything. Everything because I could not think of his name and I could not. Exp I think like I wanted to tell you the one actor looked like him. Oh yeah, 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 and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. he looks like that one guy with big eyes, and you could not get it from that clue. And I bet anyone can get it from that clue because if I said he looks like that one actor with big eyes, who do you think of now? 
Alan Tudyk. No, I, I do. Still don't think of it. Oh. The actor with big eyes. Alan Tudyk. Oh, he's very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this ha- the this movie has not a lot of people in it. I just wanted to say, Kelly Simpkins. I don't know who she is or uh, what she has been in, but um, she kind of looks like if Tilda Swinton and Judy Greer morphed yes. into the same person. Yes. And that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Chris Parnell is always funny. He is never not funny. And if you say anything different, just stop listening to our show. Paul Shear, also very funny. Uh, he, okay, let me ask you this. I feel like Paul Shear knew what type of movie he was in mm-hmm. when he was making this, but mm-hmm. he did not do a good job of keeping the tone of the rest of the movie. Elaborate. Okay. Well, let's be real. Paul Shear, not a super actor. Like, good, funny, but he's always a little over the top mm-hmm. to the point where it, like, kind of doesn't fit with the rest of everything else. That's true. That's true. And, like, this, I feel like it was the same way, where everybody kind of treated this like a serious movie with, like... Uh, but Paul Shear can't play anything seriously. Yeah, that's true. I want to see him pull a Nebraska like uh, Will Forte did. He doesn't have the face. Oh, but neither does Will Forte. No. So that's impressive. I never watched Nebraska. I haven't either, but I've I've seen some scenes from it, and he's he's quite good. Hmm. Um, I don't think there's anyone else in this movie. You know, I think that's also what it was missing. It was missing June... Diane Raphael, it was missing. Um, Honestly, Jason. if this movie had Jason Manzukas in it, this would be the best movie that's I ever been made. I love like anything Jason Manzukas is in. Uh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's got the Stranger Things kid in it, Joe Keery. Yeah, and then he disappears. Okay, so he is a photographer for this newspaper. He's in two scenes. I don't know how they. Well, I don't really know why he's in this movie. He doesn't really have a purpose. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, and Hannibal Ress is in it. He's uh, very funny. And he has one scene also. Again, there are a lot of people in this movie that I don't know how they got to be in this movie. Mm-mm. But they're in it, and it does not make the movie better or worse because of it. Um, so that's pretty much the rundown of, like, the people... Um, what what else do you have to say? I mean, I have nothing to say about the people. They all looked like they kind of didn't want to be there. Except for Chris Parnell. Chris Parnell just kind of has that face where he's like, oh, you want me to do something funny for this? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what is Slice about? It's about... A pizza delivery chain that was built on an Indian burial ground or graveyard. I wasn't quite sure. And they disrupted those dead people that were there. So now they haunt the city. But then there's also somebody killing somebody, but it wasn't the ghost. There was a lot happening in this movie. There was like ghosts and witches and werewolves. And one of them were the murderer, question mark. But nobody really liked the ghost. I don't think anyone knew that the witches existed. And only it seemed like a few people were aware of the existence of werewolves. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know who the killer was? The killer was the witch. Okay. I was just making sure, because based on the way you described that, I was well, because not certain. They they try to make it sound like it was maybe the ghost that killed them. Or the werewolf? Because the cop had a vendetta against the werewolf? You know, now that I think about this, this <laughs> is very confusing. I, you know, I was like, it's so simple. How does Caitlin not get it? But, okay. So, here's Do you what's get up. it now? No, I get it less. Right, I'm saying. Here's what's up. Okay, so there's this town called Kingfisher. And there's this asylum. 
and everybody in the asylum died or something like that. Oh, right. That's what it was. And so they built this shopping center over top of this asylum and all these ghosts showed up. And then this mayor by Chris Parnell shows up and he says, hey. Yeah, I didn't get that part either. He said, these ghosts are not doing anything good for us. Let's go put them in their own separate city. So there's a thinly veiled theme of segregation, question mark? But it seemed like the ghosts wanted to be separated. I mean, did you ever hear a ghost say anything in this movie? Good point. Besides Joe? Good point. Good point. So then... Well, I mean, Chris Parnell. Okay, so that's the setup for this movie. There's the town of Kingfisher, and then there's Ghost Town. Ghosts live in Ghost Town. Uh, the people live in the people part of town. Right. Um, Caitlin, how would you describe the look of the ghosts in this movie? Oh, yeah. Was the one um, guy that worked at the pizza shop a ghost? Joe, yeah. Okay. Um, I would say it looks like they had a lot of makeup on them. Yeah. So they the, look like normal people, but with a heavy white face powder. That's uh, actually the best way to describe it. They do not do any sort of effects. Except for when the one guy's eyes bug out. That yeah, was that the was only effect. weird. Well, that and then the green nonsense at the end. But that was with a witch, wasn't it? Right. So doesn't count. Yeah, but like the bug out thing was. I don't know why they did that. I don't know either. It made no sense. Because you never see that ever again. No, was it to like set up the movie or something? I think it was supposed to be campy fun, but it was just kind of... Awkward? A thing that happened. So, after we're told about this town being separated... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's back up again. The ghosts. So, they did no effects for these ghosts. They're literally just people with white makeup on. Um, Which, in a way, I said, well, that's kind of clever. But then it's also... Confusing. Confusing and cheap because sometimes it's not dark enough. Right. Because actually... sometimes Joe's makeup wasn't dark enough. So that's why I was like, is he like turning into a ghost? I don't know. Well, Joe always had like a dark ring under his eye. Yeah. That was the only way that I knew he was a ghost. But it kind of looked like he was just turning into one. Yeah. I don't know. It was weird. But also, the only time you really know that people are ghosts is when they say... Oh, I'm it's a ghost. a ghost. Right. Do we ever see those people in the diner again? No. They never go back to the diner. Okay, that's... To see Hannibal and that pregnant woman. That's disappointing. That's a storyline I would follow. So, here's a fun fact I just learned about this. This movie was meant to be a TV show, which is why they had so many characters. Oh. That makes sense. Right. Because they did introduce a lot of characters that you would think would have bigger payoff, but none of them do. There's, like... They should have got rid of them when they remade the movie. Made it feel less long. Yeah. But, I mean, if they cut all those people out, this movie would honestly probably be, like, an hour. That's okay. Like, okay, let's talk about Big Cheese, the drug guy. Right. He... Like, that was kind of, like, a big thing. And then it never happens. Yeah. Honestly, I'm disappointed that this isn't a TV show. I could see this being, like, the next big Twin Peaks. Um, I'm offended that you compared this to Twin Peaks. Okay, so, like, it wouldn't be, like, as good as Twin Peaks? It wouldn't even come close to being as good as Twin Peaks? No, but, like, picture a story that's kind of campy, like an old horror movie. It could be good. That's what I'm saying. But, like, but, like... Like, Twin Peaks in the way that there's, like, a lot of mystery in the town. Like, ooh, like, what's going on with these people over here? Or, like, who's killing these delivery drivers? I don't know. But we find out halfway through season two. Yeah, yeah. That's a Twin Peaks joke in case you didn't catch that. I didn't get the cheese thing. I mean, I knew they were drugs, like, some type of drugs, but, like, I didn't really get it. Because right. they gl- gloss over it. Sean was selling drugs called cheese. Mm-hmm. And I guess Big Cheese makes the cheese. 
But knowing I, I what know. I know about drugs, I'm willing to bet. <laughs> knowing that what big, I know about <laughs> drugs, I am. I am willing to posit that Big Cheese himself does not make the cheese. He just tells the other people how to make the cheese. Right. Perhaps he cuts the cheese. <laughs> um. I wonder how like the drug system works. How would one get into that business? Uh, Do you think you just have to like grow up childhood friends with someone? Probably. That's a um, bummer. That's a bummer. <laughs> what What are you trying to say to me if, right now? If the world was to ever go upside down and I had to make a living, I would choose to sell drugs. But I don't know anyone who could get me in that business. So I'm just saying. I could actually that's not true. I have plenty of cousins that would be able to get me hooked up. I take it back. I feel like I'll be fine none if the of world these turns upside down. That you should have admitted <laughs> on this podcast. We have all these search engines after us now. <laughs> CIA. The CIA has bigger fish to fry. All right. So Big Cheese, played by Island. I hate that Elon name. Pick a different Noel. one. Nope, that's his name. Big Cheese. Pick a different one. Also, okay, here's a good question for you. So let's say that you did get into drugs. Mm -hmm. What would your, like, drug dealer name be? Mm. Okay, the first one I could think of is Circle K. Okay, you gotta explain that one to me. (laughs) What do you mean? I don't need to explain it at all. Yeah, but, like, why Circle K? (laughs) Well, my name is Kaylin. K. K. And I like circles. If I had to make a period (laughs) <laughs> what? So I figured if I had to pick a favorite shape, if someone was like, gun to your head, what's your favorite shape? I would pick a circle. And also, there's a gas station called C- Circle K. So, you know, it could be a double thing. People don't know you're talking about the drug dealer, or you're talking about the gas station. And I could sell my drugs at Circle K. <laughs> I. <laughs> that's probably the whitest thing that you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's great. And what would yours be? I didn't even think about that. I didn't think you were oh, going to turn the well, question back on. Well, me. now you got to come up with the first one. Okay. Um, wow, this is tough. Probably, like, the magic man. The magic man? Yeah. No, that is a child molester from my childhood. Is it really? Yes, I told you that story. I do not remember that story Remember, it's a guy all. at church that would do magic tricks, but would be inappropriate. Oh, uh, okay. So, <laughs> mine is worse. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> just well, cut this whole part out. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to just... <sighs> Honestly, though... Circle K is a good name, I know. Big Cheese is probably a, big, a pretty good name. No. Yeah, because then he could, like... He could name his minions, like, other types of cheeses, like Little Gouda. <laughs> And he could say, like, all these puns. I like, could name my other people, like, other gas stations. Uh, I gotta go get that cheddar. I gotta go get that BP. What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Big payday. <laughs> when you say, I gotta go get that B- BP, it sounds like you're just gonna dump a bunch of oil in the Gulf of Florida. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. You're just going to go taint a large body of water with your drugs. <laughs> Stop. It's making me so hot. It's so funny. All right. Oh. So that's Big Cheddar. So there's big a big plot. Like, it's kind of like a big plot for the first half of yeah. this movie. Like, right. oh, hey, Sean's dealing drugs. The cheddar, which literally just looks like a cheese packet. or It is cheese just packet. a cheese packet. A sugar packet. Well, no, with it's like, like no, 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 with a picture of cheese on it. No, honey, it's 
have you ever gotten pizza from a restaurant or from like a to go place and they put cheese in there? I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Right. That's what it is. That's what it looks like. Right. Which is perfect because he's a pizza delivery right, guy. Right. So he can deliver drugs. <laughs> I'm making but it looks movie like makes so much sense. But it too. looks like Parmesan. Right. Okay. 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 I'm you here get for it. it. Now? Yeah, no, 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 no. I uh I'm on board now. Cool. So Sean's stealing drugs. Uh there's this big whole scene where uh the detective and his partner are like looking at the body and the detective's like, Hey, what do you think happened? And the partner's like oh i think he got his throat slit and the he's like how'd you figure that out and he says i deduced it and so like there's this whole subplot where like the one cop is kind of a jerk to the other cop right um which was kind of funny and it was also where like some of the worst dialogue came from yes because it felt like an old crappy horror movie but like without any of the You know, here's the thing about this movie. Mm -hmm. Nobody, like, as much of I think this movie was supposed to be an homage to, like, old campy horror movies, Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody got that. No. And I think everybody delivered their dialogue and everything very straight-laced. Yes. Thinking that the same effect would be achieved of having a cheesy horror movie. But that's not how that works. Right. Like, nobody seemed to be having fun. No, they did not. They were like, let's be I think as they also dry and serious as confused. possible. I mean, would you be confused if you were? Absolutely. This movie? I was confused and I just watched the movie. When Astrid, uh, Astrid is as he beats, when she pulls up to the circle of delivery guys getting their cheese from Big Cheddar, mm-hmm. uh, did you think that there was going to be like some kind of weird delivery guy street race? Oh, yeah, because all the bikes. In cars? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Did you know she was going to die? I did not. That threw me off. Yeah, I wonder, like, when that was supposed to happen in the series. And, like, are, are we supposed to get her character? Like, are we supposed... It seems like she has, like, a past, but we don't know what it is. I mean, we know she delivered pizza there before, but we don't really know why she stopped. We don't really know how she really knew Sean. Other than, like, he they was were a dating. fellow delivery. She, okay, if they were dating, she was not broken up about his death. Well, she was so broken up that she started trying to kill people. But I felt like that was just who she was at her core. That she just wanted to kill people? Yeah, 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 yeah. That seems like an extreme reaction to a lot of things. Well, she just seemed that way. Like, she was in a gang before or something. Did you notice that when she turned into a ghost, the tattoo on her neck got really crappy? No, but that's hilarious. Yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. I didn't know if that, like, when you become a ghost, if your tattoos just get... They deform. Like, deformed. That's so weird. That's really funny. Yeah, it was very hard not to notice. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, Bailey wins. So Nigel asked Bailey what her drug name would be. Or drug dealer name would be, and she said Miss Rizzo, which is pretty great. So why do you think it's pretty great? Um, well, I like it. Also, Rizzo is from Greece, which is one of my fave movies. Uh, she could wear a pink jacket that said "Pink Lady" on it. There's lots of great things that could come with that. So, do you think she's gonna carry around like a Danny? Zuko or whatever his name is and just be like, hey, I got the drugs here. Have you seen Grease? Rizzo does not do that. Rizzo's too cool for school. And uh, she did not act like Danny. Gosh, Nigel. Right. But like I was saying, like, would she have a Danny around? Because no. Rizzo, like... Rizzo didn't date Danny. Okay. but like... She dated Kaneki. All right, well, since you got it wrong, we have to watch another viewing of Grease. Okay, or we could just skip to Grease 2. Uh, no, because Grease 2 is poop, and Grease 1 is phenomenal. Okay, well, first of all, this movie, this podcast is called Bad Movie Day Night. Okay, Bailey changed uh, her answer no, to Little Debbie. Now it's failed. It was good. It was good, but 
I I liked Miss Rizzo. Little Debbie, not bad, but nowhere as good as Miss Rizzo. I honestly uh, like Little Debbie a little more. She said, because my drugs would be like Little Debbie's, like the snack cakes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like handing out little like Swiss cake rolls <laughs> with like... Snowballs. Cocaine. Snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm pretty sure that's Hostess and not Little Debbie. I don't know what it is. But honestly, we've spent so much time talking about uh, the drug dealer aspect of this movie and not enough talking about the things that actually matter. Because I don't know what happened in this movie. We're I've been trying to get there a lot. We've only gotten to the second scene of the movie. Oh, this podcast is going to go on forever, just like the movie. That was my goal. This is art with what if, art. What if this podcast was longer than the movie? Okay, that would be amazing. And there have definitely been times where I've we've come pretty close to being longer than the movie. Oh. Anyways. Astrid, she's a waitress. Astrid. Talking to her pregnant preg, preg, pregnant wife. No. What? Wow. What, what are you I talking saying? about? What are you saying? <laughs> pregnant coworker. Right. And they're like, hey, did you hear Sean died? And she said, WTF. Right, that's what I'm saying, that they're not dating. Because, like, how do you not know your boyfriend died? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. They weren't Maybe dating. Maybe they were on a break, and she just found we out. They were on a break. <laughs> <laughs> so she throws on her perfect pizza jacket and is like, I'm going to go back to work for a perfect pizza. Everybody's like, whoa, Astrid's back. I guess we can get back to work. And that's the thing. They don't have, like, what contact, what, what context do we have for her coming back? And, like, they made it seem like such a big deal. Oh, my gosh, Astrid's back. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. This is the best day ever. But well, it's like, see, why? Why do we, why do we care? Well, at one point they had that picture. Yeah, okay, of, we like, see one picture. Together. One picture. No. Bailey also just texted and said, or like I'd give them drugs with a little Debbie on the side, like a little <gasps> snack basket type thing. That'd be the best drug dealer ever. Purchase drugs, get a snack cake. I feel like if I was really into drugs and someone gave me a snack cake, I'd be like, great. It, it depends on the drug that you were on, though. Yeah, that's true. Okay, we really need to get off this drugs thing. You're the one that started it. Well, I, she had a good answer. Uh, I had a good answer. She had a good answer. I don't even remember changed. what your answer was. Circle K, Nigel. Circle okay. K. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, so Ashley comes back. She's like, I'm going to go to the last place that Sean was and find out who killed him. Meanwhile, there's these women who are protesting something. I don't know. Women always got to be protesting something. They're protesting the shopping center that the pizza place is at. Right, but they're all witches. And they're saying that they're, like, supporting the ghosts. But then I don't know if they wanted everybody to think that the ghosts were killing people, which was going to help them tear down the shopping center. I don't know where the witches came from. I don't know what their goal was. I don't know where they're going. Basically, these women were protesting, and we don't know why. Well, And there's no point, real reason to know why. Carl, the janitor, says that they're trying to open the <laughs> gateway to hell that's underneath the pizza place. P.S. There's a gateway to hell underneath the pizza place. Okay. And this then movie had too many plots. But then by doing that, they can control the ghost population and turn them into slaves. But I don't really know what that would do. Maybe they could overthrow the world with ghosts. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. But so like they're working with the mayor to convince people that ghosts are killing people. Why but are they again, working with the mayor? I don't know either. They just gave him a lot of money, and he just wanted to do paintings of boobs. So, they give him money, and he's like, I support you, but, like, I can't. And they're like, that's no good. So they killed him. They killed the mayor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember when we had that neck brace on, and they took it off, and it's like, oh, he's got a big gash. 
And then they're like, oh, surprise, we're witches. And they vomit energy into the air. Oh. That makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they killed him because they were mad that he wasn't helping them. Mm-hmm. But I don't really know how that makes him help them more because he's dead. And he's a ghost now, so. And he's a ghost, so they can't kill him twice. And he could, I guess, like, he could still be mayor. I thought he was a ghost the whole time. Why would a ghost send no, all that's the what I'm ghosts? Saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I didn't get. To ghost town. Right. That's what I'm saying. I didn't understand that, but now I get it. Okay. I get it now. You get it now? I got it. Okay. So then, that brings us to the werewolf. Chance the Rapper. Because if witches and ghosts weren't enough, let's add a werewolf. Yeah, I don't really know why he has to be a werewolf. Why couldn't he just be a witch or a ghost? Or a person? something else. Or like a person. Yeah, that's cool. There's lots of people in this movie. So, I mean, uh, why not just add one more? He, everybody for some reason thinks that he is the killer. I don't really know. Like, at one point they're like, hey, I bet it's the werewolf. After the first person dies, but then Scooter gets killed, and that person sees him on his, like, little scooter, which is kind of weird. Is it symbolic? Probably not. Uh, He drives away, and let's see. He, and they're like, oh yeah, it was definitely the werewolf. Hey, remember when he killed all those people last time? Which Did he? No, he didn't. That's what I was also confused that, about. I also don't know why the witches were killing people. Be- were they trying to do the thing that they did the like first time? Or like this time? Were they... I... No one's goals or objectives were clear. No, it doesn't really make sense. Um, anyways, where the pizza place was used to be a Chinese restaurant. Yummy, yummy Chinese. Where a bunch of delivery people died, mm-hmm. and they closed down, and they thought it was the werewolf, even though the werewolf worked there. That's confusing. Right? And he never really said if they were his friends or not. He just said that he worked with them, and they ran him out of town. But then everybody also thinks that werewolves can change into werewolves whenever they want, so that was also confusing. Right. Doesn't that have to do with the moon? Right, and he says that when he scares the pee out of the Are werewolves the only ones that change with the weather? They don't change with the weather. Well, they change with, with, like, the... something. Yeah. Changes with something. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. And conveniently, because witches have to do everything under the full moon, um, mm. they also, uh, you know, the werewolf is able to turn into a werewolf and kill them. Which, the werewolf, he kind of looks like something out of the Michael Jackson Thriller music video. And this movie takes on a whole new dimension when you imagine that it's just the opening portion of the Thriller music video. That would be amazing. Right? Missed opportunity. It is definitely a missed opportunity. Do you think they could get the rights for the Thriller song? Absolutely not. Mm, Bummer. I mean, the... They put... The one song that they had in this movie was that David Lynch song that four people have listened to. I know, but that's such a, like, too good of a song to be in this movie. It was. That was actually kind of a cool scene. Mm-hmm. But, like, also not at the same time. No, it went on for a really long time. It did. Uh, at one point, the witches reveal themselves, and then ghosts start riding in the street, which I don't really know why. Those two are correlated? Yeah, I don't really know what know happened either. there. Hey, you haven't talked about the reporter. Because she's annoying and she contributes so nothing to annoying. this movie. She's Why like, Why was she so annoying? I'm a reporter. I'm going to do my job. I'm also the narrator of this movie. Yes. Ugh, she wouldn't shut up. That was pretty much her voice the whole time, too. It's really mm. all that I have to say about that. The whole movie? I mean, what else do you want me to say? Uh, talk about the werewolf fight and... The, the Astrid dying. Okay, so, like, Astrid is trying to kill the witches. She does kill the witches, doesn't she? Yeah. But then the witch kills her. 
And she's like, oh, crap. Oh, yeah. Whenever she finds Sean, she's like, well, hey, let's get out of here. He's like, nah, I'm dead. I'm going to keep doing drugs, which I guess ghosts can just, like, do drugs in this movie. So that was something that happened. And, like, every, I think this movie could have been better had, like, people have been more... Like, if we focus more on the story that there was just regular ghosts living in a town next to humans, that could have been a good movie in and of itself. Yeah, like, do you think that they were trying to do some kind of race metaphor with the ghosts being in a different section of town? Oh, I don't know. Or, I didn't think that much about it. I mean, that was, like, my immediate thought was, oh, we're segregating ghosts, like, the living people and the dead people? To be fair, though, if I had to segregate ghosts... I would, because I don't really want ghosts to live next to me. I'd just be weirded out by it. But what if they were just, like, normal people, like, going out and getting their paper, and then, like... Do they smell? No, they're ghosts. They're literally nothing. Mm, Although this movie doesn't seem You wouldn't have to talk to them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I want this movie to focus on that. I want this movie to focus on, like, the days in and out of the ghost. Yeah. What do the ghosts do? What are their motivations? Some of them were still parents. What if, like... Joe worked at a pizza shop. What if someone was killing people and ghosts, and they were like, what? You could kill ghosts. Right. Well, now this is terrifying. Now it's a Ghostbuster crossover. Now it's a Ghostbuster crossover? Yeah. Ghostbusters are the only people that can kill ghosts. They, I mean, they don't kill ghosts. Okay, they, they capture like, ghosts. They, store them in a... Thing. Well, same thing. Okay. But, like, not. Mm, but pretty close. Okay. But, like, not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Um, what about when Paul Shear was mad that the reporter wanted to ask questions and he's like, no, you have to buy a piece of pizza. <laughs> hey, Paul Shear was just trying to run his business. He That's really all was. He was he's do. like, I just want to deliver pizza. Actually, the thing that I we'll loved... talked about that scene with him talking himself up in the car. That was uh, pretty funny. Like, you got this. You can treat them. And then they all show up and they're like, hey, we're sad about Sean. We should leave. And he's like, yeah, you should leave. <laughs> We've done a really good job of talking about this movie in order. Um, did this movie have an order? I mean, uh, maybe. I couldn't tell. I mean, it had like a beginning, middle, and an eventual end that seemed to be painfully long what else we got um Um, the movie just didn't follow like any cohesive structure and i think that's the thing that like was so frustrating for me is like i couldn't follow everyone's story there were so many people in this movie and so many different stories and i just couldn't follow everyone and also i didn't care about anyone and it definitely could have been better as a tv show i do agree with that yeah well that was the thing too is like there's no one main character in the movie no and so you don't really get to experience any of this through anybody's perspective or get any twists on it. And even, like, the reporter, at one point you think, like, she's the main character, but then she disappears for half the movie right. and Astrid shows up. And then Astrid and the reporter disappear. And I don't even know who we're following at that point. The werewolf, maybe? Maybe the werewolf. Maybe. I don't know. He was honestly my least favorite part of this movie. Yeah, he didn't add anything at all. Other than he was like, I'm a werewolf and I don't kill people. And you know what his motivation was? Surviving? To deliver Chinese food. Quality Chinese food at a low c- price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he emphasizes it. That's quality Chinese food. <laughs> I credit that. I would like quality Chinese food. In my I mean, life. That's true. You remember when we got that Chinese food and it was garbage? Don't start. I get so mad. That Chinese food was not Chinese food. Yeah. You know what we should make is the noodle dish thing. What noodle dish? The ramdan. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that looks good. All right. Uh, We talked about the witches, talked about Big Cheese, Werewolf, Astrid, Sean... The detectives. The detectives. How do the detectives? Relationship. Yes. How do they end up? How do they end up? In the movie. In the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, they're researching Sean's death. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the ending for them? They, oh, so they show up at the end, and you think that, like, the one detective, because he hates werewolves for a stupid reason, is going to shoot the werewolf, but he kills the witch. And that's how the movie ends. Yeah. It's it's actually very, like, anticlimactic. It is. It's just like, cop, boom, witch, dead, done. Yeah, it's like, okay, first of all, Paul Shear's an idiot, and he never listens to Joe. Which was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I laughed at that pretty much any time Joe said anything. <laughs> Especially when Do he was Do you think like, Joe knew what was going on the whole time? He did. That was like the running joke of the movie is like he was like, hey, there's something evil going on. Yeah, like, but do you, you think he careful. knew exactly what was going on? I think he had a pretty solid clue that there was a game. He could have been more like clear. I don't think he... Like, at one point, he, I'm pretty sure he says, I think it was in the quotes thing that I had pulled up. Jack, so you're telling me that my pizza place is built on a gateway to hell? Joe, I've been saying that. Jack, what? Never. <laughs> That's funny. Right? Yeah. So, I thought that was funny. Maybe I need to, like, rewatch this movie. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's so hard to stay awake, so, like, I it's get so it. It's so hard to, like, focus. And that's, like, a whole thing, and, like... Why is the werewolf, like, the main picture? Because he's Chance the Rapper. Well, they should have picked a better picture. I mean, they literally put, like, the four main characters on this poster. Uh, Chris Parnell's not on there. Yeah, but he's, like, a secondary character. Uh, he's pretty famous, though, so... Yeah, but he's, like, equal to... But, like, he's less important. I guess so. I like how the tagline of this movie is dead in 30 minutes or less. Like, um, you honestly think that this movie... That movie should be 30 minutes or less. You think that based on the name of this movie that it's going to be about the hijinks of a pizza shop living in a town? Which could have also been better. That would have been a crazy movie. Yes. So, that's... Um, what else you got? Well, all I have is a way to make this movie better. All right, tell and me it's how not you even make this movie great. better. Basically, I just think that we should be focusing more on the ghosts and what their lives are like and what is their day-to-day -day outcome of their lives. What do they think? What do they feel? Do they go to work every day? Joe does, but we don't see any other ghosts working there. How is the tension between them being separated with the alive people? What if your mom's a ghost and your dad's not? Can two ghosts be in love? Or can a ghost and a human be in love? Can they recreate life? I don't know. These are all valid questions now, that I want answers to. Now, if this was a to. TV show based on Perfect Pizza, mm -hmm. a pizza shop with a quirky group group of people in a town in which witches, ghosts, and werewolves are real, I feel like we would get the chance to answer all of those questions. Exactly. So I think they missed their opportunity. It should be a TV show or it should be nothing. <laughs> Just definitely don't be this movie. But please. just don't be this movie. Yeah. I do think if it was a TV show, it could be better. I do see how it almost has this like Riverdale. Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. Yeah. Sabrina the Teenage Witch vibe. Yeah, it's got like all the setup for that. And yeah. And it's like, well, we're actually going to solve all of this in the next 45 minutes. But like not really get to the core of anything either. Yeah, and the climax is going to be like, oh, there's a gateway to hell, witches, werewolf, dead. Yeah, there's so much going on. I feel like the season finale could have been, there's a gateway to hell. That would have been a good season finale. That would have been a great season finale. This He's... needed like 10 episodes max. Yeah, they could have made it a mini series. Yeah, that's true too. That could have been fine. Yeah. So, if anyone wants to remake this as a miniseries, I would watch it. Yeah, come on. Lynch. What if Lynch took this? No, I wouldn't watch that. You wouldn't watch it if David I would, Lynch I kinda took wanna, this? I kind of want to see where this would go, like, with the same guy in control. Okay, I'm just saying if, like, he didn't. Oh, if he didn't? I would trust Lynch. I would want... Who would I want to direct a TV show of this? Mike Flanagan. What is no, he... No, no. David Lynch. No. I, yes. No. Yes. David Lynch. David. No, I know exactly who, who I want to direct this. Mike Doherty. 
Who that? He did Krampus and Trick or Treat. Oh, that could be good. Right? Because I feel like that the tone of those movies fits better yeah, with this. Yeah, that's than... true. That's yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and he's got nothing going on after Godzilla vs Kong. All right, so if you're listening, Michael Doherty, please make this into a mini series, and I promise I'll watch it. Yeah, I think you could do a good job with it. I think he could do the perfect job with this. If you want to consult with Lynch, maybe Lynch could direct one episode. I don't know. Yeah, guest direct. And uh, I'd I'd watch it. Yeah? All right. Where's this going on our bad movie date night ranking list? Hmm. Where should this go? All right, I got to think about this. Rewatchability is low. Enjoyment watching it is low. How bad it is? Pretty high. It's pretty high. See, I put that. I would put that in like the th- bottom third of our list. I was thinking like after Plan Nine or after Girlfriends of Christmas Past. Like I would definitely rewatch this before the Meg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah I'd that's a good point. Probably rewatch this before Girlfriends of Christmas. I would Past. too. But I would watch Plan Nine before I watch this movie again. Yep. Okay. Let's do that. Between Perfect. Plan 9 and Girlfriends Look of Christmas Look at that. Same Good page. Job. Teammates. Boom. All right. I have else? a new segment for our podcast. Okay. It's called Talking About Date Night. Talking About Date Night? Yes. Okay. okay. What, do you, what about Date Night would you like to talk about? I would like to talk about a couple things. Nigel, what is your favorite movie to watch for a date night? Like, single movie or type of movie? Type of movie. Type of movie? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I really like when we watch Giallos mm. and, like, horror movies, mm-hmm. like, older horror movies. Um, they often fall into this bad movie category. Mm-hmm. But they're so, so good. I know. It's just nice to put it in, turn your brain off. Giallos, I think, are at least good storytelling. Yeah, those are great storytelling. Um, yeah, I would say those sci-fi movies, like deep intellectual thinking things, stuff that you and I can talk about afterward. Mm-hmm. What about you, girl? Um, I would, I would definitely have to go with Giallos. Yeah. I love a good Giallo. Um, man, I think about Giallos a lot throughout my day, too. Just like, I kind of wish I lived in that, like, world of a Giallo. Well, this is very concerning. First the drug dealer <laughs> comment, and now this. Well, I just like the time period in which they take place. The 70s. Yeah, I like the so 70s. So you just want to go back to the 70s? Go back to the 70s? Um, I just want to live in the 70s, yeah. Okay. Um, and I also think that they're really just great storytelling. And you know what was actually really good, Giallo? The Love Witch. I don't think that that's not really a giallo, but Wait, it's kind of it? like a weird horror ish movie. But it was kind of like a giallo. Well, it had like that 70s vibe, but yeah. there was nothing giallo about it. The blood. Okay, but there was like no mystery to be solved, and there was no. That's true. Like, it, there was no mystery. I don't really know what you'd consider it then. I considered it a giallo because it had that like 70s vibe and like. Um, I think it's just like a. a horror movie with like an homage to 70s era I like supernatural that. thriller type things those are good movies I really enjoy a good giallo um okay one more question okay if you could go to any time period and live there for the rest of your life what would it be the 90s why I don't know just Things were nice then. Uh, no, the fashions were horrible in the 90s. Yeah, I'd, I'd take it. <laughs> I would go to the 50s. Yeah, I know that you would. That furniture. Yeah, that's good furniture. Or like the 60s. Bit like mid, f- I mean, late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, that's that'd where cool. it, that'd right? be nice. Yeah. Oh, man, that'd be the life. That would be the life. Um, Why would you go to the 90s? I don't know. It was just the first thing that came to my mind. It's like after the 80s, but like, it's like right at the end of like 
the eighties and like before things started to get like complicated and <laughs> like before the internet came out. Just just to refresh you though, Dawson's Creek was a one of the hit shows in the nineties. So that's what you'd be watching. You know what I'd be watching? I love Lucy. Yeah, but also like some of the best episodes of The Simpsons came out in the nineties. Yeah. Well I got I love Lucy. Also, I've got leave 1999 to was like the best year in movies, so there's that's, that. That's true. That is true. Stanley Kubrick was still alive. He was alive in the 60s. Yeah, but like, like he was at his best <laughs> during that time, you know. All right. Well, then I'll catch you in a couple decades. Okay. <laughs> when you're like ancient. Well, if you were alive in the 50s and you wait until the 90s. You'd be, like, super old, and I'd be, like, not old. <laughs> That's just a fact of how time <laughs> goes, progresses. I'm offended. Like, if you went as you are right now to the 50s, and I just uh-huh. went to 1995, and we 40 years would, trans, like, go by, like, you'd be 60. You wouldn't love me when I'm 60? No, I'd still love you when you're 60, <laughs> but I'm just saying you would be old and I would not. Because you'd be 60 <laughs> years old. Well, fine. I'll find a new husband in the 50s. No, you will not. <laughs> because I'm going with you. You better go with me. Of course I'd go with you. You could buy all the furniture. Yeah, if we had all the money. Yeah, you could be... You could take technology back to the 50s and create it and pretend like it was your own. Then we would create a paradox in the time continuum. And the next thing you know, Skynet's killed all of us. Or we got Biff running the world. Yeah, which isn't much different. That's so true. I think about that a lot. I do too. (laughs) Back to the future knew what was up. They did. (laughs) Man, we haven't watched that movie in forever. We should watch that. That's a great movie. I mean, once we get our new house and get everything set up, we can make a movie. <gasps> What's our first up? movie going to be? Oh. oh, that's a hard decision. Oh, I've already made that decision. What is it? Blade Runner 2049. Oh, my gosh. Provided we get a new subwoofer. I mean, it's a good movie. It just wouldn't be my first pick. Oh, it's my first pick. But I'll watch it. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you, too. All right. So, I don't know what we're talking about next week, but we're going to do Leprechaun at some point this month. Yeah. Because St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. It's right around the corner. It's March, which means new movies, new things that are happening. Uh, We'll need to do a new episode of the Bad Movie Date Night Third Wheel Edition at some point. Yeah. That'll Um, be coming out this month. At some point, whenever you... We should look for, like, any movie related to St. Patrick's Day. Just do them this month. That's a really great idea. Let's do that. Let's do it. All right. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, I don't think so. I'm pretty excited for the month of March. Great. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to go over to ajourneyintofilm.com and check out the cool stuff that's on there. And don't forget to hit subscribe button to that podcast because then you'll never miss out on a new episode. It just downloads it automatically. And then you're like, hey, what's this? I should listen to it. That's right. And it'll change your life. And you know what? It'll change your life. Tell your friends Tell your about friends about this about podcast. Us. Leave a review. Say, hey, I like your podcast. Five stars. Five stars. Tell your friends, hey, check out this five-star podcast that I just listened to because it is amazing. It is so funny, and I've never heard a husband and wife talk about movies before. That's right. And they'll say, what? This is so revolutionary. And then they'll listen to it, and we'll have more listeners, and we'll say, hey, thank Thank you, you. friend. (laughs) And that's all I have to say about that. All right. Let's do this. And we'll see you next week. Until then.